what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button i hope you like this video this is going to be your review for married to medicine season 9 episode 4 so we open up this episode we are still down to dr contessa's house where they are still trying to figure this whole thing out with dr heavenly dr heavenly done left out the front door contessa done went to her room and she done closed her door she ain't coming out to talk to nobody and the rest of the ladies are in her basement trying to figure it all out now, Jackie calls Heavenly and says, girl, can I come outside and talk to you? She said, you can come out here, but I ain't going back in there. So they go outside to talk. And Heavenly is upset. And, you know, she's hurt and she's upset. And she said, listen, she's mad at me, but she ain't mad at her husband. She mad at me, but she ain't mad at her man for putting all their business out there. Like, I mean, I talked about it, but he put it out there. Like, like I wouldn't have had nothing to talk about if he hadn't put their business out there. Like, you mad at me, though. Now, inside, Simone and quad arguing and they really arguing about the same thing because Simone is like listen I um I've tried to talk to Heavenly like we've tried because Simone was like this isn't a, I mean quad was like this isn't effective like why didn't y'all just talk to her she was like we've tried like we've tried to talk to her we've told her that we didn't appreciate it we've told her you know that th that this is disrespectful and this this and this but it doesn't work so Quad was like, see, I call her when I got a problem. And then Simone was like, girl, please. Last year, you got mad about her putting some emojis up there. And y'all had a whole argument, which is true. But Quad was like, well, y'all don't know how many times I talked to her privately before that. And they were like, that's our point. The point is, people have tried to talk to Heavenly, and it doesn't work. She continues to do the same things over and over again. Now, outside, Toya and... um. Simone tried to leave, and Heavenly got them blocked in. And the petty in her just won't let her let them out, child. She eventually let them out, but she sat there for a long time and like she couldn't get the key to her car. Child, anyway, moving on. Because um, I guess she's got some sort of electronic situation going on with her phone. But, girl, you got there. You drive that car every day. You could have got you, – you was fine. So Jack, Dr. Jackie goes back in and she talks to Dr. Contessa. And Contessa's hurt. She said, I'm really hurt because, honestly, I really thought – you know, I was hoping that she would just apologize and just be like, I'm sorry and apologize. And she's just not who I thought she was at all. Like, she's just not who I thought she was. And I'm thinking, in what world did you think that that, knowing Dr. Heavenly, in what world did you think she would just be like, I'm sorry? First of all, most people, that wouldn't be their response. But certainly not Contessa. I mean, Heavenly. So then we see Quad talking to um, Anila saying, listen, I'm irritated too, but this wasn't the answer. You know, this wasn't about really trying to resolve anything. This was just about trying to embarrass her and put her out there. So the next day, we see Toya meet up with Simone. And basically, they just recapping, talking about, you know, Jackie and Quad are just still up her ass, still kissing her ass. And, you know, they just... They just gonna keep letting her do what she wants to do and basically coddling her. And then we have Dr. Heavenly meeting up with Anila. Anila's so busy now, she is kissing her ass. Talking about some, well, I had your back, Heavenly, and I just want you to remember that I had your back. I just want you to remember that I had your back. And I was like, girl, for real? And then Anila tells Heavenly, listen, Quad is upset. Like, like she was she had your back last night, but she really is upset by the things that you said and of course dr heavenly was like what well listen i'm just saying she said well she's she said what about the b the bbl we talked about that she said no she's upset about the you sleeping with married um men and she was like well i mean those are the rumors i mean that's out there and then she proceeded to sit there and tell anila who was spreading the rumors and who husband she allegedly was sleeping with now bravo bleeped all that out so we don't know who she was talking about however comma Girl, you didn't double down on it, Heavenly. So, again, you have, you still haven't learned, you know? And, again, we could go back and forth about, well, this, you know, she's been doing a YouTube channel for a while, and she says these things, and whatever. It doesn't change the fact, and this came up later on in the episode when the guys got into it. If somebody tells you that what you did hurt them, just apologize. Stop trying to defend your actions. Apologize because you didn't mean to do whatever it is that you... You didn't mean to hurt them. You thought it was funny, but they didn't. 
And I'm telling you, I didn't think it was funny. So the, the conversation really should end there. Why do we have to keep, I shouldn't have to quantify my hurt. If you're my friend and I'm telling you what you did hurt me, that should be the end of the conversation. Anyway, child. So then we see um, Dr. Contessa in her practice. Her practice is off the ground. It's off and running. She said Scott loves it, even though he was a little apprehensive about starting their own business, their practice, but he loves being a business owner, loves being able to set his own hours. We see that, you know, she's working with NFL players or ex-NFL players. Um, she had Rod Gardner in there, who actually used to play for my team, so I know exactly who Rod Gardner is. Glad to see he's well. She getting him screened and all that for CTE and all that good stuff, and that was a good little, you know, working moment. Then we had a whole situation with Anila. Let me tell you what I'm not getting ready to do. I'm not getting ready to sit here and make a big deal about Anila having to take care of her own damn kids. I ain't doing that. Listen, Anila, you ain't the first, middle, last, or only. There's a whole lot of women that get up every morning. They get their kids ready for school. They cook their breakfast. They, you know, drive them to school or get them to the, to the bus stop. And then they go work 8 to 12 hours at, at a job. Then they come home, they pick their kids up, they cook dinner for their kids, they get their kids' homework together, they get them baths, they get them in bed, and they go to sleep just to do what? It all over again tomorrow. And a whole lot of them don't have a husband who works and allows them the time to sit at home. Girl, after you drop your kids off at school, what do you do the rest of the day? And again, I, I you know, I, I'm, I try not to compare one person to another, but... I ain't about to sit here and entertain her complaining about how she lost her nanny and now she's struggling to take care of these two daggone kids. I ain't doing it. Moving on. Next. So, um, we have the, uh, Simone and, and, um, Cecil are throwing, uh, it's Halloween, child. Well, before we get to the Halloween party, we see Dr. Heavenly talking to, um, Damon and telling him about what happened because, you know, they got to go to Simone's Halloween party and she was just letting him know what happened when they, you know, um, you know, they kind of, you know, they confronted her or whatever. And, you know, her husband told her, he said, listen, I know that my wife has, you know, her sense of humor. I know she finds things funny and she's a jokester. But if other people don't find it funny, then, you know, maybe you should, basically he told her, stop doing it. You know, you should be mindful of other people's feelings. And if they're telling you that what you did hurts them, then maybe you should stop doing it. And I feel like he was very nice in his Damon way he said it. But I also feel like we got a real moment from Heavenly where she was hurt. She talked about the fact that what Contessa did hurt her. And she actually started crying. Um, she said her and Contessa were friends. They traveled together. You know, she said they... They would sit on the phone for hours. They they hung out together. Like, when you know, outside of the cameras, they were really friends. And she really is hurt by, by this. Now, to take away, to come outside of the show for a minute, Heavenly did go on her YouTube channel and sort of explain her, her point of view. And her point of view is, look, Contessa, me and you hung out, me and you were still friends even after I did the, the, the YouTube. When exactly did you get mad? She said, and then when they were at Anila's housewarming celebration, she told, she said, you, you came up to me and said, I love you, you know, and, 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 you know, basically we're good. I want us to work this out. And then next thing you know, then this ambush happened. So, I mean, I feel like Dr. Heavenly is wrong for putting people for doing what she does with her YouTube channel. Is it entertaining to me? Yes. If I were her friend, would it be hurtful? Absolutely. But the flip side is, Contessa, did you wait till the cameras were rolling to create a moment and to give yourself a storyline? Because if you were telling her all along, we're good, we're good, we're good. I don't know. Moving on. So we get to the party. It's a Halloween party. So, you know, everybody's dressing up. So we have Cecil is um, the guy from Money Heist. Uh, Simone is an old rich bitch. Child. <laughs> Girl, some people might say that's not a costume, Simone. But anyway, and it was a skate party. So it was cool because they had it at like a mansion, but it looks like the inside of the house had like a skating area. So that was cool. Probably one of the houses that somebody bought and had a skate rink in the basement kind of thing. Um, so it was, it was cute. Um, 
Toya and and um her hus her husband dressed up as Beyonce and Jay Z um. That was a miss for me. Let me tell you why it was a miss. Because I'm going to need you to put a little bit more effort in, Toya. Now, your husband went and put the dreadlocks on, okay? He he gave himself the, the Jay-Z hair. Why you couldn't get yourself a blonde wig? You would have looked more Beyonce in a blonde wig. Now, I know Beyonce don't always have blonde hair, but when you're thinking about a, a signature Beyonce look, girl, you got to put the hair in there. Moving on. Um, Heavenly and Damon were... Cleopatra and uh, Mark Antony, or one of her men, child. Um, Scott did, came as Muhammad Ali. Contessa didn't come. Now, she told him she was out of town, but Scott tell let the, the cat out the bag. She at home studying for a test. She said, I ain't fooling with these people. I ain't ready for it. Um, Carrie was there, child. She was a nurse. How original, Carrie. Anyway. Um... Who else before I get to the the coup de tay child? So Anila and her husband show up in a U-Haul truck as movers. And they say we're here to move Toya and Eugene. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like that's a joke that could have been funny if y'all were in a good place. But the fact that y'all ain't friends. And y'all really not in that space? It was catty as fuck. It was shady as hell. Now, as a viewer, it was still funny and entertaining. Because we know the whole joke about Toya. And that, and it ain't even just this last move. Child, they done moved 20,000 times since this show started. But baby, that is the first time that I have ever seen Simone's husband get mad like that. I mean, Toya's husband get mad like that. Baby... Eugene ass was hot. When I say hot, like hot fish, fish grease hot. He said, that's not, he said, listen, the girls do that pet, that petty catty shit. The guys don't do that. We don't get into it. You know, if your wife wanted to show up and be petty, that's fine. But we, we don't do that to each other. And Anila's husband was like, the shit's funny though. It's just a joke. It's funny. So Toya pulls Anila aside to talk to her about it. And she's trying to explain to her why it's not funny and how, you know, oh, Dr. Jackie and Curtis was pirate child. Uh, I knew it was another couple I was missing. And how it's not funny and how, you know, the, 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 um, something about their friendship. And Anila was like, but we're not friends. Like, by your own, like, you, you won't let us be friends. Like, you will not allow whatever this is with us to, you won't let it go. We're not friends. So you acting like... I did something and I violated our friendship, but we ain't friends. She got a point, Toya. So Eugene is ready to go. Like, I feel like Eugene was so hot because, and the fact that um, Anila's, Anila's husband wouldn't come up off of it. And he was like, but it's funny, but it's funny, but it's funny. Like, I don't understand why you mad because it was funny. So Eugene was like, I'm leaving. I'm out. I'm ready to go. And Cecil even was like, I thought it was kind of funny too. But if you're saying it ain't funny, then it ain't funny. So Eugene was about to leave. Now they ended up staying. They did end up staying. But Eugene was like, I'm just going to stay over here. I ain't going back over there with him. Because if I go back over there, it's going to be a problem. I'll stay over here for a little bit, you know, but mm-mm. So then we saw Heavenly Pool... Quad aside and apologize. She said, Quad, I'm pulling you aside one-on-one -on -one because I do want to apologize. Like, I'm sorry what I said. You know, I was wrong for speaking on, you know, you dating a married men. And, you know, I apologize for that. She said, but I ain't apologizing to the group because I ain't sorry for everything I said. But I am sorry to you. And Quad said, listen, I appreciate that and thank you. She said, but here's the thing, Heavenly. People know that me and you are friends in real life. So when you say stuff like that, it... People tend to believe you because they know that me and you are friends. And that's why it was hurtful. And that's why it's bothersome. So Quad accepted her apology. But what Quad said in her confessional, she said, listen, I accepted the apology. But I'm saying this, she said, and I'm saying this to you, Heavenly. If I feel like you disrespect me again, 
I am disengaging from our friendship. And she was dead ass serious. She stared at that camera and she meant that she ain't break a smile. She ain't, she ain't, she was serious. And I think she would do it. I think she really absolutely would do it. Um, because again, like I said, I understand where she's coming from. I absolutely understand her, her POV on that. So then we see the guys getting together. And I feel like Cecil was bringing the guys together to try to smooth over the situation that happened with Eugene and um, Anila's husband. They went to the axe throwing place, which was probably not the best place to go. Um, but all the guys got there first before um, Dr. Sanjay got there. And Eugene was explaining, you know, the fact that that it, that it was hurtful. And what Cecil said was, listen, I thought it was funny too until I talked to Eugene and I heard what he had to say and I see it from his point of view. And ultimately, if he's saying that it was hurtful, then what we have to do is respect that that's what he's telling us. He's saying this was hurtful to me and you've got to respect that. So Dr. Sanjay gets there and Eugene was like, listen, if he apologizes, then we good, we can move on. You know, but if he doubles down on it, then then we got a problem. So he shows up and, you know, they were like, well, your ears must have been burning. And so Eugene explains to him why it was, a, why it was hurtful. And he says, listen, if, you know, I thought it was funny. But if you're telling me that that it was you, it bothered you and, you know, it was it was hurtful to you, then I apologize for that. That's where he should have ended it. He should have just stopped right there. He going to say, but I still think the shit's funny. Lord, what'd he say that for? Child, that's where the episode ended. Well, no, it didn't. They got to arguing. And then he said something about, Dr. Sanjay said something about motherfucking this. But he didn't call Eugene that. Eugene was like, call me a motherfucker one more time. And I was like, now, nah, Eugene, you're doing too much. Because you know good and well that man didn't call you out your name. He did not call you one. He wasn't talking to you. He was saying, man... I still think it was motherfucking funny. Like, that's how he said it. I said, okay, Eugene, you're doing a lot. You putting 20 on 10. Now I'm starting to give you the side eye like, hmm, maybe it is, maybe something is bothering you that's deeper than this because this, you doing this, this is way too much that you're doing. But anyway, that's where the episode ended, child. I'll talk to y'all later. Looks like they're going to Vegas next week, child. Peace.